So a yakamora is a, a joke on on shoot night with an audience, uh, and the first time you refer to the joke, uh, it bombs. Um, and then you know... <laughs> you know it's going to bomb the second and the <laughs> no, third. Four more oh, right, times. Right, right. To... Okay. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to Hollywood Game Changers. My guest today is a Emmy winner and a Golden Globe winner. I'd like to see those. You should have brought those. No, I've got them right here. Uh, <laughs> and he has uh, known, he's a producer, writer, known for uh, Murphy Brown, Sybil, tons of other shows. Becker. Uh, my guest today, Russ Woody. Woo! Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Russ and I, uh, of course, I've followed your work over the years. Uh, always very happy that you had such great success. But we actually met in my first film that I ever did uh-huh. in uh, in Los Angeles. Well, we actually shot in Sacramento, yes. West Sacramento, I yeah. believe, yeah. called Grad Night. So do check that out. It's quite a winner. We made a fortune, as I recall. Uh, we were never paid for that, Russ. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. It's never the other paid. way. Yeah. That was deferred. Deferred meaning never got paid. Uh, I think it was John Tenario oh, who you put remember. the thing together. Yeah, so that was eight hundred dollars in nineteen. Which was a lot of money. Yeah. It, was, it would have saved me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> I've uh, listed. I've calculated the interest. Have uh, you at home? So, so, so have you ever John, wipe him out? <laughs> yes, with all the cast, the star-studded cast. It was really amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Right. And I just want uh, for the listeners to know, Russ in that film, Grad Night, played. We were all graduating from high school. You streaked the stage at the graduation, which was popular back then. Streaking. Yes. It- Yes, it was. And was that a Very you know a calling for you to be a streaker? Or? Uh, this... well, I played uh, um, weird somebody. Weird Charlie. Charlie. Okay. Weird Charlie. Yeah, well, I streaked my uh, high school. Uh, you actually swim did? meet. Yeah. Oh, so it was coming from some experience. Yeah. This uh, for for <laughs> you kids out there. This is uh, method acting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, two friends and I. Everybody in those. Uh, it, this was in the seventies when I was in high school, and, and uh, so streaking was a fad. It was really popular. They streaked the. Uh, they, they do way worse now. Yeah. The yeah. Academy Awards or something like oh, that. Oh, that's Didn't right. Yeah. And it was right around then too. Yeah. It was very popular. Don't try it. It was a disaster. We we uh, there was it was a swim meet and two friends and I. One of them is a you know one of the fastest runners on the football team. So he went by lickety split. Well, and we got towels and we tore out a hole in the towel so we could see where and then we would wrap it around our head. But people didn't had, know it was you. Well, they did, but. <laughs> Because, <laughs> uh, you know, I had a reputation. For doing no. wacky things? Um, no, no. Uh, uh, so we went all the way around the school, and then we took our clothes off, and we had t- our tennis shoes on. And then we said, all right, on the count of three, and somehow the count got mixed up, <laughs> and someone took off. And we said, no, no, no. And so they came back, and then we took off, and I ran into the other guy, and then the guy who could sprint like crazy is already across the pool and uh, we we and then I lost my shoe. Was it not Did a, you make it back to get your clothes? <laughs> That's what I want to know. See, I don't remember. Oh wow. That's I, you hysterical. You know what? Maybe we wore the towel and then wore the, <laughs> here. I don't know where the hole was on the trip over there. So, here did you always know you wanted to be a writer, Russ, because you just like hit the ground running and just boom. From grad night, that was really obviously the game-changing <laughs> moment for you. But you just hit the ground running and just show after show. And back then, if I may, um, you could write for a show but not necessarily be on staff. So you could sell a script yeah. to like you did for St. Elsewhere, Newhart. I was at MTM, though, at the time. Oh, you so were? I was Are you at MTM? So they were, house, yeah. here, here's Russ's script. Do this yeah. one. Well, I still had to kind of audition. So, I oh, mean, I did. had to write a spec script for St. Elsewhere. And, and Tom was, Fontana was running it at the time. And loved it. Uh, they didn't shoot it, but he liked it enough uh-huh. to um, assign me a couple of uh, scripts. So, okay. And I was a huge admirer of that show. That was it was a great really show. an incredible show. I Not as good that. as Grad Night, but... <laughs> We're going to circle you know, back to that. I didn't write Grad Night. No, I didn't it either. sounds like I did, and that I would... <laughs> 
<laughs> would scratch would have off been a my lot resume better. And did. we would have gotten paid, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, so in this string of shows that you were um, sort of working at, at MTM, is that right? MTM? Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, what was the standout there for you? Uh, as far as the show? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it was St. Elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, they were producing New Heart at mm-hmm. the time. Right. And uh, the Mary Tyler Moore Show and those... Uh, oh, WKRP was there oh, right. at the time. Did you write one of those? No. No. No, I did Hill Street, though, ah. which was just down downstairs. And yes. I worked with... No, that was upstairs. St. Elsewhere was downstairs. Which, why would you care? Yeah. Right? I, uh, <laughs> because they were all compact back then. Yeah, it was yeah. a little lot. It was over yeah. in Studio City. And I met... I worked with David Milch CBS on... CBS Radford. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a cute little yeah. place. Um, and I worked with David Milch, who um, unfortunately is not doing much these days. But he's the guy who went and did N- uh, NYPD Blue, NYPD Blue, yeah. and the uh, Deadwood. Right. Uh, brilliant, brilliant yes. guy, and fascinating, and crazy. I, I always yes, but I always felt like he sort of mentored people and sort of gave yeah. people. It was kind of his signature thing. Was he would find somebody with talent and sort of mentor them and give them yeah. their their break. Which yeah. happened to Scott Williams as well. Is that right? Mm-hmm. The drama guy. The drama guy. The, the drama procedural. Guy. Yes. Yeah. So what, uh, other than uh, Hill Street, which wasn't necessarily funny and sane elsewhere, what what got you into doing, because most of them were um, three camera, right? Yeah. Sitcoms? Uh, well, my, you know, since I was a kid, I, comedy has always been a fascination of mine, but... Uh, at the time, this would have been 85, 86, sitcoms were dead. Dead? Dead. They, really? they were going nowhere. There were no, they were just stop, stop making them. What, you mean the three camera sitcoms? Yeah, because they Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but they were doing comedies, but it was just filmed. Uh, not even that so much. Mm-hmm. Um, they were just dying out. Uh, no, Cosby brought them back. Mm-hmm. But at the time, you know, that's why I sat down and wrote a spec script for St. Elsewhere. Um, uh, because um, it was... Yeah. That was where the... the and a, what an innovative show. I mean, people look at, what is it, ER. And oh, yeah. this was before ER. Yeah, it was. And it was. They would do stuff that was just great. They had an elevator in the hospital. It was supposed to be a crappy hospital. And uh, had an elevator, which every once in a while it would get stuck like a foot or two feet before it's <laughs> supposed right. to, and, they'd and have the doors to get, would open. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they'd have these medical conversations <laughs> as, you know, and yeah. just incredible stuff. So there was comedy in there. Oh, a lot of comedy. Mm-hmm. And in Hill Street, too. Mm-hmm. A little darker in mm-hmm. Hill Street, mm-hmm. but I remember. I think they had to, as I recall, I wasn't a part of this, but I remember hearing it maybe from Milch, but they had a, 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 a bit where they had found a bunch of kittens and they put it in a, in a little bag or a box. They put them in a little bag or a box. And then later in the scene, this heavy set guy comes in and he sits on it. Oh, no. And so the <laughs> No. <laughs> which they all thought was hilarious. Oh, they and couldn't think, do that today. No, I think the network may have made them take it out. Oh, I'm there's sure. There's another one yeah. where a cop is, they go into an apartment, and there's this dog, and somebody tosses the ball, and the ball bounces on the table and goes out the window. <gasps> and the dog <laughs> goes, <laughs> leaps after it. Oh, my God. So it's a little true. darker. Yeah, very dark. <laughs> that, they would not get away with that today. Hmm. So what was the game-changing moment in your career? Was it Murphy Brown? Uh, in a way, yeah, I felt like. I mean, don't let me put words in your mouth. I no, mean, you, you did win. <laughs> no. You did win the. Uh, was that the Golden Globe for? Uh, no, the Emmy. Uh, the Emmy, yeah. Emmy, yeah. just one or two. You were nominated, but you were nominated many times. Yeah, a couple. Couple times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so what was that like? Here you are, Russ Woody, and you know you're nominated, and then you win. Um, it was fun. I I don't like to think of that stuff too seriously wow. take it too seriously i would take it seriously well it was it was really fun and you get a lot of attention from it but i think people drive themselves crazy in this mm. town thinking to i've got to have that and if they come close but they don't get it they go out of their mind and it's not if you love what you do if you right. love your work 
Yeah, you know. that should be the payoff. Yeah, and it's fun. It's mm-hmm. fun to do that stuff. It's fun to go to the governor's ball afterwards and get drunk and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> to go up on stage is you know it's really weird. A lot of step and repeats, I bet. What's that? A lot of step and repeats. You know the yeah 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 and. And I was standing next to Candace actually when we oh. got it. So, and she's very focused because I was I tried to say a couple funny things to her and she's just like, <laughs> and she laughs at everything. Oh so. my god! She was just trying to. Yeah, uh, maintain. she's very focused when oh. she gets. Yeah. Now, did you work on the um, revised Murphy Brown? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. How was that? I didn't go back to New York. Uh, f- to uh, work there, but they uh, Diane had me do a script. Diane English mm-hmm. uh, was the person who ran the show. Right. And uh, it was, um, you know, it was weird after 20 years to start thinking about these characters again. Um, but I like the I like the revision. Or I like the, what what do you call it? A revival. Yeah, yeah. I think, and I agreed with it at the time. But I think the mistake was uh, that they went. Too directly after the political stories. Yeah, the old series was you know light the, touch. Yeah, the political stories were an aside, mm-hmm. and that way you could get a laugh because you're not. Mm-hmm. They you were know, heavy-handed on it. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, and, uh, but I went back uh, uh, for about a week. I didn't go back for the filming of mine because I hate seeing my stuff filmed. Oh. yeah, it's horrible. Why uh, is it horrible? I don't know. You just. This, you know, the stuff that gets changed, you go, uh, oh, that was really good. Uh, or they, <laughs> you know, something that isn't yours bombs and everybody looks at you. Right. And, going, and you don't want to say, I didn't write that. Somebody yeah. else wrote that. Because <laughs> that's bad form. Right. It's just a whole thing's uncomfortable. Um, Interesting. Uh, but uh, no, I went back and, and all those people are like New York, love. Do you, are you a New York uh, person? I just play them on TV. Oh, you, so you know yeah. how to do that? Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah. That's incredible. It is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I went back and everybody was concerned about me because I, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then somebody said to me, they said. In uh, New York or? In New York okay. City, yeah. Because you said, know your way around a script. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some would quibble. Um, no, I when I got there, you know, I I'm, I had no. Uh, when I, I've been there a couple times on my own, and I just ended up uh-huh. trying to find my way home yeah. to the hotel on foot, or yeah, well, yes, because I always thought at any hour, any time of the day, you put your hand out over the no, street and a cab anymore. shows up. No. But someone explained to me this time. They 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 mother hen me. They every they sent somebody with me, and they always made sure to explain everything to me. And so another friend. So everybody was looking after. We don't want to lose Russ. Um, so that was pretty fun. Then we went to Dine English's place and uh, did some drinking. And uh, uh, that was she has a nice place. Uh, apparently, so she's does. a New Yorker. She lives in New York. I think. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, she. She, might she have was a out of, here for the show when it was. I think she. Well, they they either had one or two houses here, mm-hmm. and oh, these people. These people. <laughs> uh, and one in uh, the place up uh, where uh, Clinton and all those guys have a that. Where? Hamptons. Oh, Hamptons. the Hamptons. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's, that's so anyway, lovely. somebody explained to me the different that in New York City, which is different from every city I've ever been in, there's a difference between uptown and downtown. Yes. And as soon as I understood that, then the city started to make a little more sense mm. to me. Okay. Because I, I don't know my way around. I've gotten so lost on subways in New York that oh. it's, it's just better for me to just call a Lyft. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and now. Yeah. 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 Lyft. Uber. I, I, I always figured if I got on the subway there, I'd just be killed. I, I don't think it's killed. It's just how, where do you get off and which train? And it's too, too confusing. Although people say once you're there for a bit, it makes sense. But... Um, yeah, and there's too many people there. Too many people, people, lots of I people. No, that. we're very uh, we're LA types. weren't you born in California? Oh my yeah. God, yes, born yeah. in Walnut Creek. Uh, well, around yeah, Oakland, Walnut Creek. Arinda. Oh yeah. Is we that crazy? To, how come I don't? Remember, we talked about this just forty I know, years ago. Just forty years ago. I know. I looked at that and I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. We could have gone to school together. We, no, you know what? We didn't go to school together, but we could have, our teams could have played each yeah, other. Yeah. Or debate. 
Were you in the debate? Oh, I did that. Me yeah. too. See, did you debate or were you? Uh, the I other think type I was. Um, what was it? Was it the play acting version, which was what some sort of forensic? There, yeah, there was. I did a lot of after dinner speaking, which was I don't know. It's like stand up, I guess. Oh, you did. Yeah, because you're funny. Well, I, uh, <laughs> again, you know, people would quibble. There no, so some, so uh, seriously about this whole thing with, uh, did you always know you wanted to be a writer? I always, it was the one thing I really admired was writing. Um, and I won't say that writing television sitcoms really puts me in that artistic category. Oh, I think so. <laughs> It's those hitting those jokes and making that that uh, it's a hard form. It is a very hard form, yeah. and not everybody does it well. Shane's Inspiration is a nonprofit dedicated to fostering a bias-free world for children with disabilities through the creation of inclusive playgrounds. Shane's Inspiration was created by Scott Williams, our guest on the podcast, and Catherine Williams for their son, Shane, who died of spinal muscular atrophy in 1997. Out of their grief came this amazing idea to have a program and build these playgrounds for kids with disabilities. In addition to building the physical playgrounds, Shane's Inspiration has developed curriculum and programming to sustain inclusive play at the sites it develops. It really is something else. They have over 70 in the United States and around the world in India, in Ecuador, Kansas, California, everywhere. So check it out at shanesinspiration.org. See how you can get involved and go to your playground. So that Golden Globe was not... uh, That was hard one. Yeah. (laughs) You earned every single. Where are, where are they in your home? Are they on the mantle or? Oh, they're in my office. Office for a long time. The the uh, Emmy I used to hold up uh, yarn. Uh, um, You're joking. No, uh, no, because it's got those pointy things oh. on it, and you do just you stick. knit. No, not yarn, because uh, that sounds like I knit. Right? Yeah, it You're does. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's wrong. Uh, Rubber bands, s- string uh, for t- twine. Twine. Yeah, let's say that a ball of twine. Yeah, because I, uh, I... You use twine a lot? Or? I Well, I needed it sometimes for um, sending packages and <laughs> stuff like that. And so it was just tape? more... Never heard of tape? Could have been a nice tape to holder. You could do that, mm-hmm. but then there's no way to go... Yeah. You know, to... <laughs> I don't know what that thing is called. If uh, I hope somebody will write in. If uh, yeah, please, you know, could someone write, respond? Because that's really important. How about Becker? How was that? That was a blast. Okay, because you then went on to write a book. Yes, I did. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays with Ted. But first, before we get to this, because yeah. this is amazing, um, I do want to hear about Becker the show. It was. Uh, it that, was great. Um, Ted and Danson, I was there. wonderful. God, yeah. he, uh, you know, I told him, I said, you know, I'm not gay, but I would have sex <laughs> with you because I love you that much. Wow. And did and he say? He was noncommittal about no, okay. it. Uh, he's mm-hmm. married. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> he is such a generous human being. And, he, you know, as the show, the show never became, you know, uh, hyperly successful. It just sort of stayed under the radar. But we all knew that Ted, you know, had already had that superstardom right, thing. Cheers. He wasn't going to yeah. turn crazy, right. you know, if the show did become hugely right. successful. And he was very generous. He is one of the only actors I've ever worked with, uh, stars of a show that I've ever worked with. He would, he would come up and he'd say... You know this joke here is not working. I, I, what am I doing wrong? I, do I, do I put mm-hmm. it? What is the emphasis on the wrong word? What am I doing here? And you go, no, no, no Ted, it's not. You're not the problem. We're the problem. We're, we'll, this is a joke we have to replace. Well, that's uh, that's really amazing that he would. It's take, amazing, yeah. yeah. And yeah. and he would also come up and go, uh, you know, because there's a, there's an inclination on the part of the writers to make, you know, make you, you always got to make sure the star has a lot of the funniest stuff, right. But he would come, he'd be getting laughs on a joke, and you'd come up later, and he'd go, "Look, this joke is really funny, but it it should be it should go to Shawnee. I mean, she's the one who." And he was right, but you know, to have a star of a show do that. <laughs> so you had a great time with Ted. 
And Drew Carey, how was Drew Carey? Uh, Drew was having some problems at uh-huh. the time. It was they brought the last. you in as a fixer. Well, not so much. Well, I, you know, I don't think of myself, and I don't think I was. They they have a peculiar. I it'll be peculiar to your viewers, but you know, sitcoms are generally the writer writes the first or second and second draft, and then it goes to the, to the, the show showrunner, runner, right. and then it goes to the table. This all started at the table. So we'd basically have, there were 11 people on the staff, and, and, and we'd have a general idea where the story was going. And then the showrunner, who uh, uh, a guy named Dave Kaplan, very funny, talented guy, he'd sit there with an electric guitar that wasn't <laughs> plugged in, and he'd sort of play. And then people would pitch out lines one after the next, and he would decide which ones would go in. And we'd have a whole script by the end, and then, and then he'd... <laughs> He'd look around the room and he'd go, all right, who's, who gets credit for this? And then whoever oh was in God. line to get credit for the script. And then oddly enough, you, you know, when things bomb on the stage and your name is on the script, oh people look, even the other writers look at you. And you like go, you were responsible. Oh I didn't even say that line. Wow. That's the hardest thing for sitcom writers, I think, to get used to is, is very often scripts, there's a lot of stuff in there that isn't yours, and uh, it's hard to tell. The thing about a sitcom, especially a three-camera that they tape in front of an audience that I find fascinating is you do the show in front of an audience, a live audience, and if you ever get a chance to go to one, it's fun. First time. Uh, First time, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But if if a joke doesn't land, let's say in a scene, joke doesn't land, uh, they don't respond, the writers all huddle up, And um, I'm always curious, because I was never privy to the huddle. I was always the actor on the (laughs) stage. Hopefully not the one that, you know, didn't get the laugh. (laughs) But uh, they huddle up, and they come up with, what, two, three other options? or. And then they try that for the. It'll be the showrunner who just says, you know, we got to replace this line, and everybody huddles up, and then there's pitches. People Mm -hmm. pitch until somebody hits something that cracks everybody else up and then the showrunner goes into you and says all right this line becomes this right yeah it's uh very you know that's an interesting part of sitcoms too is that you know when something isn't working Mm -hmm. in a script they have all sorts of names for that stuff too what do they call it to know uh yakamora 5000 and that is yeah that came from i tried to i tried to research this because i was writing an article about some of this stuff and uh it, it, and i couldn't find it and all the the older folks who were involved in these shows had theories about it and i couldn't find it on tape but it is essentially a joke that that replays so it's a call it's a you okay got you got it. a so joke you, yeah. yeah then you call it back call it back yeah. call it back right. call it back yeah and so a Yakamora is a, a joke on on shoot night with an audience, uh, and the first time you refer to the joke, uh, it bombs, oh. and then you know <laughs> you know it's going to bomb the second and the third, <laughs> four more oh, right, times. Right, right. To, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. There, you know, and there are widows and and orphans, uh, which. <laughs> We have those names are for. Terms? Oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> and those are on a on a script page, um, be, because and this is can we can I swear on this show? Sure. Oh, this is really bullshit, but we do it uh, uh, because a, a, an orphan or a widow is um, that on a multicam show. Um, th- it's that much. Um, typing on a page, so uh, it's all blank. Got so it. if you can pull up the widow. It, it it becomes one less page, oh. and it feels like it's shorter to everybody else. How very interesting! Yeah, it's not, it's, but that's but it what looks it that way. It it was uh, it was uh, sometimes it's called a yoko. <laughs> Yoko Ono. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wow. I'm wow. sorry. And I'm a <coughs> Russ, huge you're, you're, John Lennon fan. And that's amazing. No, uh, and it, for anybody who doesn't know, the th- um, shows that are um, you hear the laugh track on, typically those are shot in front of an audience. Yeah. Um, and it's not so much, my experience anyway, is that the the, la- the laugh track is, it's called sweetening. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it's it's ba- sometimes there was a guy I don't I don't think he's around anymore who used to uh, to do that and he had a machine so that um, sometimes there's a quiet scene and you want to remind the television audience that there's a real audience there so he had little coughs and things he could put in <laughs> oh my god and he had uh, and sometimes. For instance, when you're talking about changing a line, if you have an actor who screws up a line, screws up a line, screws up a line, and uh, then, you know, so they change the line, they send the new line in, and whatever it is, or or maybe even they try the, the next line again, and they finally get it right, and the audience goes crazy. It's inappropriate. I mean, you know, if you look at it on the, right. on the air, it's it looks too much. Why are they right. laughing so, so hard? Yeah. So they got to they got to bring it down. Right. And right. sometimes, they, you know, they feel, if they feel like it should go from laughter to an applause, they'll, or sometimes if they applaud, so they basically conduct. Yeah, it's a really should, yeah. interesting process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it is my absolute favorite type of show to work on. Always has been. I it's, love the performance aspect. I love the rehearsal. Yeah. Pro- I love it all because you don't get to do that in the other shows. It's you show up, you shoot it, you're you're gone. Yeah, it's putting on a play. Yes, it's putting yeah. on a play, yeah. which is very gratifying. Yeah, for the yeah. actors. For the actors. <laughs> It's murder on for the, the oh, I'm sure. No, well, you know, and that's really interesting to know too that you go through some of the same anxieties that an actor does because you know. Yeah, I I mean, that's one thing I I do I have a lot of respect for is the actors go out there and you know at least if you hand in a script somebody goes wow that's really shit <laughs> you know there's that's mm-hmm. really sh- shit but well, at least if they you tell come you off the stage you know you go well you. You're you're really shit if you're an <laughs> nope. actor. No one says that, though. Well, I feel like, you know, we were talking to Scott earlier, too. You know, it sort of starts at the top. It does. The yeah. tone for the yeah. show uh, starts at the top. That's and, the way Becker was. Is, yeah. You know, That's so great. Yeah. Ted would finish a scene, and he'd come around the other side and yeah, watch and support the other oh, actors. And that's so I worked on... Um, did you work? Do you work on The Good Place, or have you seen the... Do you, I've seen it. People love that show, yeah. and I've tried a couple times. Do you? I know these gals love it. They absolutely you, love it. I have tried a couple times to get into it, and I and I just couldn't do it. But So I just refrained from having an opinion, yeah. because... It's because it goes to some really interesting places, mm-hmm. right? Like, What's the yeah. whole? You know, we are in purgatory, which is an interesting concept, right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, purgatory, that uh, middle, that middle land <laughs> before heaven, hell, whatever. If you believe in all that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to talk. I wanted yes, to please. talk to you about accepting Jesus Christ as your oh, personal today. savior. Oh, today, great, before, awesome. We're going to take a break before no. <laughs> we're finished, uh, and you too. Uh, no, let's uh, let's talk a little. <laughs> Let's changing the subject oh. here uh, from Jesus. Uh, so this came out of because after Becker, what did you do? Well, this came from uh, after Becker. Uh, I guess that that has to do with this also mm-hmm. is that uh, I was there for about five five years on Becker, which is a phenomenal amount of time in a sitcom. It um, is. Yeah, and and during that time, right in the middle, um, my father uh, came down with came uh, was diagnosed with ALS, mm. Lou Gehrig's uh, right. disease, which is a, a shithole, crappy. Uh, I, these are technical medical mm-hmm. terms. Mm-hmm. So yes, I, don't I mean believe that. they are horrible. exactly. Mm-hmm. My mother died the week he was diagnosed. Oh my lord! So um, wow, your yeah. turn in the barrel. Yeah, uh, and, and they are you were, the only child? Technically, I have an older brother, but he sort of opted out of the whole thing, and that's another story in and of mm-hmm. itself for another podcast. Yeah, so okay. I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, great for that. The <laughs> old brother. So. No, I, I I tried to write about this. Is that experience with my dad for the year and a half uh, that he lived from diagnosis to his death. Um, and I tried to write about my brother, and I rewrote it several times. He just, 
you know, he said he didn't want to see dad that way. Mm -hmm. And with ALS, it doesn't affect your brain. Uh, You're fine in the brain. I thought it had, and I'm, again, not a doctor, but I thought it sort of hit you and hit people in different areas. There's there's two different types. What it does is is the motor neurons between the muscle groups and the spinal column begin to deteriorate. And there's, um, uh, I forget what it's called, there's one that starts in the extremities. Mm -hmm. And the way it finally ends is it gets to the lungs and you slowly suffocate to death, oh, which God. is what they told my dad at UCLA, which there's a chapter in there about um, the UCLA uh, reached a level of imbecility <laughs> of nincompoopery, I think is what I mm-hmm. To an astounding level. Uh, But uh, that's how it eventually, we were able to avoid that through hospice uh, with enough morphine and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. But uh, yeah, so, and then there's the other type that starts in the throat. Which Uh, you lose your speech, right? You lose, that's one of the first things that happened to my dad. And so he had a machine Uh, that would help him speak. And this machine, as he, I got him a place here in Studio City and he and my mother lived in Pahrump, Nevada. Hmm. Which I've if heard of Pahrump. Yeah. No. If you've ever been there, you know it's not... If if you live Small. there, it's not really living. I wouldn't call it living. Right. It's... Existing. Existing, yeah. yeah. What made him stay there? They, uh, I don't know. My mother was... Um, she was not a nice, good... She was a crazy... No. Oh. So they had to move around all the time, and my father placated her. Oh, wow. Yeah, this, so. that's, I'll be back the day after for that, tomorrow that podcast, for that one. That's, the mother ooh. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was just going to finish saying that my, you know, I tried to write about my brother, and I, I said it as kindly as I could, and then my brother read part of it, and, he, and, he, and, he, and his first compliment was, well, I, read, I started reading your book, and, and for the most part, you've got everything right, which is high praise. And then later, uh, I got a text, I think, from him, and he said, uh, well, I read more of your book, and this is the last you'll ever hear of me. He's always a drama queen. Mm -hmm. And it was. (laughs) That was a few years ago. Um, So, you know, and I just tried to be honest. uh, But I was uh, very kind, I think, in my portrayal of him. So, Tuesdays with Ted. So, did your dad... um Hang out with Ted Danson? Yeah. Or, yeah? <laughs> um, when he, he was an auto mechanic when he was uh, working. And uh, after he got ALS, I moved him here to Los Angeles where, so he could be close to me and my family. Mm-hmm. And then he started coming to Becker every week on shoot night. Oh. And I never expected him to. And it's something I, I hate to have guests on the show because it's, you know. It's, it's a long night. It's and, a long, mm-hmm. yeah. arduous night. Yeah. Um, but for those who enjoy it, it is really, uh, I mean, my sister-in-law used to want to come to every single show. They right? enjoyed it. They enjoyed the uh, warm-up guy. They enjoy the changes. Scene. <laughs> really, seriously. It's only yeah. because you're in it that you would go, no, that's not a fun yeah, night. But I, I'm sure he loved watching you. It, it takes a while to, to garner this much cynicism. <laughs> Um, you know, my dad came every week, and the warm-up guy got to know him, and he would uh, take my dad's machine, and he would play uh, it for the audience because there were, you uh, know, bells and whistles on it, literal bells and whistles. Uh, and he had his own seat at the front of the audience. Oh, and so Ted, every time he saw him, he'd yell, Woody, and he'd, and he'd go across the stage. And he'd, sometimes he'd sit down and play with the machine and my dad. And this was particular for men. Not for women, and don't say it has anything to do with maturity. It probably, it probably does. Maybe. Um, men always typed out profanities. <laughs> Uh, or just to hear it. Yeah, because you push a button, you hear it. Oh, or it my Or it could be gosh. a whole sentence, and yes. you push the button. And so that there were these uh, filthy uh, limericks and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, and they would, you know, and Ted would say, you know, the first time he started playing with it, he typed out a bunch of insults to the director who was over there and then played it. <laughs> and and um, Andy Ackerman. Oh, yeah. yeah. I worked with him. So legend and a wonderful guy. Yeah. Um, oh, so Ted kind of – the cast and crew, amazing. I would think this is an amazing story if I wasn't in it because the cast and crew just adopted him. And uh, everybody, um, um, the guy in the back, Billy, who was um, 
crazy Italian guy. You'd hear him on the phone going, God, God damn it, you motherfuckers better have the, the tomato sauce here by 3 o'clock or I'll take what I got and ram it up your fucking... What? And you'd, you'd, you know, guests would be on the stage and you'd walk by the door and somebody would just reach over and close the door. So right. <laughs> <laughs> he would he w- he always gathered up fruit and stuff because my dad started to have trouble eating uh, solid mm-hmm. foods, and then we would puree them and stuff, and then later it became impossible. Um, but Billy would always have a, a bag Smoothie. of fresh food, fruit. Yeah, the fruit. Uh-huh. The, he would. I mean, they were huge. And the you know the wardrobe and costume people, even the network guy, would bring T-shirts and stuff from other shows. My dad's favorite show was Jag, and he, and uh, one the uh, stage. Oh, it's so sweet and director. so heartwarming. It really was. It was. She had a, a, a as he started to lose strength and and his ability to walk and get around was affected she uh came up she came up to me she's about that high cheryl Mm -hmm. downey i think her last name was she came up to me and she said uh because my dad wasn't there yet and he was usually always there in you know in the front row on that seat and she came up and she said your dad's not here and i said I said, yeah, well, he's, he'll be here. He'll be here. She said, well, no, I, maybe I should go look. And I said, no, I'll, you know, I, I had a couple things to do, and I'll, I'll, I'll go look. And she says, ugh. And she, <laughs> <laughs> she goes off. And at the end of the show, she, <laughs> she comes up to me, and she says, okay. I, I, I mean, you know, she, she was so fed up with, you know, guys who – so mansplained she, or yes okay. right. <laughs> she says and she's she's got the, the temperament of uh-huh. a hummingbird anyway so she comes up and she says all right here's what's going to happen on show night your dad will drive in through the gower gate which at that time of day only ted danson and uh kelsey Grammer could come through and my dad he will drive up in front of stage 31 uh, where a PA will come and meet him, a production assistant will come and meet him, and the keys then go to a guard who will take the car to the tank, which is this parking area mm-hmm. in Paramount, park the car and come back, and then the PA uh, will... No, the PA takes the car. It doesn't matter. But And the guard would walk my dad up the steps and into his seat and then reverse the whole process at the, at the end, end of, of the, the show. show. Yeah. You know? So I saw my dad later that night, and I said... He's like a celebrity. A fucking star is born. <laughs> I, I, next, oh. uh, next time I need a call from you that you've got a dead hooker in your trunk. Uh, so this was really for your dad as well as yeah. for you. Um, it was very sweet. Everybody came out of the woodwork. The highlight to, of his life. To, it was. We ended up um, we ended up doing an episode about him, and Tom Poston Tell me about that. played my dad. Uh, Tom Poston. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, whose wife, his own wife, died of ALS. Oh no! Okay. Um, before this, and it was um, I don't know. You know, I, I I can never judge my own stuff. I don't know how you good. wrote the episode. I take it. Yeah, and it came about because we were in the writers' room, and I think it was Matt Weiner, the guy who does. Did, I know uh, Matt. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. He was on Becker for about three years. Ah. And I think it was hit. We. In a, in a writer's room, we all can imitate the actors and make fun of. And so everybody by that stage of the game could imitate my dad's machine, uh, which see. was mechanical. Right. So Matt, I think it was Matt, he came in and he said, oh, somebody said, is your dad coming to the show? And I said, yeah, I think so. And Matt says, oh, because he says, I saw him out by the guard's gate and, they, you know, he was having trouble getting in. So he, he had typed out, open the oh." Open the gate, you dirty motherfucker, or I'll rip your head off and shit down your neck. My dad was a nice guy in the world, right. so that's what was funny. And then we all started cracking up, and then it, you know people are pitching out other horrible, vile, vicious things my dad is saying to the guard. Right. And then, and this is how shows, story ideas come around. We right. said, all right, wait, 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 what if Becker helps some guy, a really nice old guy, Tom Poston, who finally gets a machine and he can express himself again, and he's just an asshole. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so, and he played it perfectly. Oh, and that's I awesome. And I said, after we broke the story, bro- breaking the story is, you know, getting it all on the board and structured. Um 
so I said, I, look, I can't go forward with this unless I get some clearance from my dad. <laughs> right. So people wouldn't, because, you know, there was a similarity between this guy and my dad. Um, um, so I went, uh, I would stop by after work and, and I went in and I said, Dad, look, we're thinking about doing a story about an old guy with white hair and uh, ALS and he's got a machine. And he's a very nice guy until he gets the machine, and then he becomes an asshole. And my dad, my dad just cracked up, and he said, yeah. Oh. Let's do it. So then we did it. And that evening, I mean, you've been to enough of these um, uh, filmings to know um, it was the one experience in my years of doing it that was so unique and intense mm. because – on the stage, Tom Poston was, you know, playing this guy with ALS and didn't have much longer to live. And a little ways into the episode, the warm-up guy introduced my dad to the audience. So the audience knew that, yeah, there was a fictional character here, but here's the real mm-hmm. guy sitting with them. Right. And there was – and it, it didn't – you think, oh, that'll kill the laughs. It made it funnier in mm-hmm. a way. It made the stuff, you know, the mm-hmm. stuff in the show, but it made it so intense. Mm-hmm. And I've never been on a, you know, on a soundstage with an That's... audience that just felt it so uh, intensely. Was that a game changing moment for you? Yeah, it was. It, that really was. Yeah, I we, can um, see that. And we ended up getting an award from. Uh, uh, um, MS, uh, oh my gosh. Jerry's kids. So I said, oh, now you're one of Jerry's kids. It's like, it doesn't stop with you. Uh, <laughs> so they had this big gala in uh, Beverly Hills at the, at the Hilton. And your dad was able to go? Oh, yeah. Wow. They said, so they were giving the cast and, and the cast and producers an award for this show. Um, and so they called me early on and said they they do it mostly because they want to get the actors there and it promotes themselves sure, and right. stuff. And they said it's in April. And I said, well, I don't, you know, April, all the actors are are in the Bahamas. So, I don't know, you know what they well, you know, your type. You, you guys oh, yeah, we travel go off. the world. Yeah, we we do. Yeah. <laughs> um so uh so i said look i'll ask him but you know I, it's hiatus nobody's and so i went down to the stage and i asked him and everybody said oh if it's for your dad i'll be there oh there were two actors who couldn't because they were gone but uh um, wow, ted included and so we went to this it was mm. 800 people black tie at the place where they do the Golden Globes. The, okay. Yeah, yeah, that big w. room. Well, sure. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, so my dad had never worn a tuxedo before, so I had to go over and help him with that. And then the MDA called me and said, uh, well, well, we'll send a driver over to pick him up. And I said, you know, it would be nice if you made it a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> So he took my aunt, his sister, oh. and and then it was a, an evening when they gave the award. We went up on stage, and Ted got in front of the microphone um, and spoke. He, he started by saying, uh, Woody, Woody, where are you? And, mm-hmm. and my dad is like this, and he just... He just said the stuff that makes me want to cry now. He, you know, he said, um, you made this year really special for us, and you remind me of my daddy. His dad died about a year before, and he always was envious of the time we sure. were getting to spend together. And um, and then I made a speech, and, and it was, you know, you say the things you, you say, but usually you don't say them until somebody's gone. You know, and I said to my dad across a sea of... Uh, you know, people in gowns and black ties. I, you know, I said he was, he's was he been a hero to me in a lot of ways, you know, big and little. And then I talked a little about his military experience where he was in the Second World War, where he was on a ship called the Nevada, a Marine, and he was an inch from being killed by a kamikaze. Uh, one was coming into the ship, and they aimed for the bridge, uh, and my dad was just below the bridge and the machine guns, and they see the, the plane coming in, and, and all the Marines, of course, turn the, the machine guns to the kamikaze. And just before it hit the bridge, um, one of the wings blew off, and it dipped to the oh, side. Wow, wow. It, it ended up killing a lot of people to the side of the bridge, but that's how my dad uh, lived. I survived. Um, and... 
I'll tell you the one moment that was a game changer for me. This this is I don't know. It's you know what I learned from the whole experience is you got to look at certain moments and and take them in and understand what they are because they're not the big ones. They're sometimes they're the little ones and. At, as the ceremony, uh, as the um, night uh, concluded, um, we all left the stage and then we made our way back to our tables and stuff. And as I got to my dad's table, um, uh, my wife was there, my uh, her, his sister, and uh, you know just all these people. And it, there was a crowd around him trying mm-hmm. trying to get to him like he was you know a beetle right and i was trying to edge my way up there and and you know this one woman had just finished hugging him and saying thank you for and i i totally understand why some people with als just make the choice not to be seen and my dad wasn't that way he just said you know bring it on yeah and that takes a certain amount of courage Uh, i would probably be the other type Mm -hmm. but um so this woman finishes hugging him, and I'm just trying to get up towards him, you know, excuse me, excuse me. And just as I get to my dad, this huge guy steps in front of me, and he grabs my dad by both shoulders. He was one of the guys who came out of the buildings at 9-11. Oh, my God. And saved people. But he grabbed my dad's shoulders like he, there was something really important he wanted to say, and he wanted my dad to hear it. And he said, you know, Woody, he went, my Woody, because he had a lousy first name and a lousy second name. He said, you know, Woody, I keep getting called a hero for what I did on one particular day. He said, but you guys who live day in, day out on those ships and on the foreign soil and in those situations, and you didn't know for months on end whether the next minute would be your last or not, he said... You guys are the real heroes, and there, um, and there, the, he hugged my dad, and then held him again at arm's length. And they were, you, you know, my dad's an ex-marine, and and this guy is, you know, a firefighter, and they both are not familiar really with dealing with the emotions, mm-hmm. and both are on the verge of sobbing. Sobbing, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so then the guy's like, "Well, okay, good luck." <laughs> but it was one of those moments where you go, "I could not have orchestrated the evening." To right? Be Had more. you gotten there one minute, one second sooner through the through the crowd, yeah. that moment might yeah. not have. And happened. the whole evening, though, yeah. it's just you know, who gets to do that? To have a whole Ted dancing on a stage with the yeah. other actors, yeah, that's honoring yeah. your dad, and it's about as it was, it was really as good as it gets. Evening, yeah. Yes. Well, I need a minute to pull myself together. I'm okay. Um, Let's keep going. For clamped. All right. <laughs> and we'll come back and play uh, Liar's Dice. Oh, great. Which is also called, um, what are some of the other names for it? I wrote it down, but I, now I can't uh, remember it. Something. Horrible names. Others. Like, you know. Oh, dirty names? Dirty names. Oh. So we'll play that in a minute. That. We'll be right back. Yeah. So this is Russ's uh, favorite game, which is Liar's Dice. And there are other names for it, which I will find out at some point. Why are there so many dice? Uh, look, I don't know. I didn't, I'm, okay. I, this is a uh, dice rolling I, game, and you keep the number... Um, what you keep the number they land on a secret and then have to guess statistics about the number their opponents rolled. So Boy, please that explain. Makes it really yeah, that's sound complicated. complicated. And that's I'm why I was not, frightened. I'm not that smart. Yeah. I would not be able to play this game. Okay, so here we, we start are. start with five dice. Five each. dice. Okay. And a you're cup. Gonna, you're gonna repeat everything I said? Is this how this is gonna go? This is the comedy rule. Okay. <laughs> got to go three times. i got to say it twice. And then you say, three so times. So there's three. Yeah. That's a comedy It's a callback. Uh, wait, now I have... All right. Just one cup okay. and five dice. Put yeah. all the here's dice the, in. Here's the deal. Yeah. It's ten dice between us. Okay. And... Yes. I, you don't want me to see what's underneath you there. So I'm going to do a little of this. Yeah. Okay. 
And in fact, I'll just do this so you see. When you look, uh-huh. do okay. that. Got so it. yeah, uh-huh. um, so do that. Because cheating is loud. I think this is a bar game, uh-huh. and you know people are drinking. I've been when to a bar. This. Have you really? I've been. What's tell, your tell us. <laughs> <laughs> this is a PG rated show. <laughs> oh, I was misled. I'm kidding. I, uh, I'm kidding. All right. So you right. do that. You slam it down. Ten dice. Ten dice. Now. Uh, I won't go into any particulars. I'm figuring there's 10 dice, so I'll start the lie. You I'll tell lie. you, and every time you Is this, bid, are we trying to do, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah, but are we trying, trying to, to do say, like poker, a poker hand? It's a little like that. Okay. Because that Maybe I know Yahtzee, how to do. Maybe Yahtzee, it's a little So then like. it's liar's poker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Are we, we'll call it that now? Yeah, let's call it. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so you start the lie. I start to lie, and then you either say, "That's there That's aren't a lie, I'm gonna, Russ. Yeah, see, you don't have to. You'd be so dramatic. I know you're an actress, yeah, but I start to buy. I start to feel like really I'm a liar, um, <laughs> like we're dating, and you just. Uh, That's a lie. Yeah, you walked into the room, and I'm naked with this woman, and I'm saying, "No, no, no this isn't what it looks like." That's a lie. See. This is, yeah, this is I can't, reality. I can't okay. play now. Uh, okay, so ten dice and say yeah. I say there's there's five threes. Mm-hmm. And if you don't believe there's five threes in ten dice, then you say oh, you're a liar. because you're including mine as well. Yes, both. Ah. But if you want to go further, you mm-hmm. have to go up either in either of the numbers. So if it's, uh, what, what do I say? Three threes or yes. something. Yes, yeah. six, six threes. threes. Or... Uh, five fours. Mm-hmm. So as long as you keep going up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Let's this gets one. very interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to say uh, three fours. And what if I say okay? <laughs> what if I say okay? You can't. I can't say okay. No. I can't say okay. Look, it's in the bylaws. people. I can't say okay. Liars, yeah. Lie. I yeah. don't believe you. It's a lie. You Really? Yeah. Well, I got one. And I have one. So, Son see? Son of a bitch. And then what? We take that out? No, I take it out. Oh. See? Now there see? are nine. <laughs> see? It's really easy. Now you start. Okay. Uh, three twos. I think you're lying. Shit. I've got two. Oh, that's good. That's good. But these, uh, that's a one and a one is two. Now, do I have to take both twos out? No. Just one. Just one. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's the one and the one? Equals like two? I had a one, you had yeah. a one. That was two. Okay. You're really. <laughs> one of you guys who want to sit, step in for <laughs> Step in for Judy. For Judy, because I don't think she, this is. I'm not right. grasping the whole thing, but we're Here down we to just a couple. Eight. Eight? Eight what? Eight. There are eight dice. Oh, eight dice. Oh, okay. I'm going to say three sixes. I'm going to say four sixes. You notice I locked eyes with him. That's called yeah. bluffing. Yeah. Oh, you notice I just went to the bathroom in my pants. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. I, I, this, see, this is tough. This is where it gets very tough. I'm going to say you're lying. Oh, shit. oh, good. See, if you'd one? had two. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I thought I was bluffing really well. Now I've tipped my now, bluff. Sometimes they play with ones wild, but we don't have to do that. Oh, I like because wild it's cards. Do you want to do that? Not right now. Okay, shoot. <laughs> I'm going to say three ones. Hmm. I'm going to say you're lying. Yep, because I don't have any. Oh. Erg. This is fun. I could totally oh. play this. Oh, and when you're drunk. Oh. <laughs> no. Do you have to be drunk? Because that wouldn't yes. work for me. That's in the... Oh. That's uh, in the rules? Yeah, it's okay. in the rules. Uh, is it my turn or yours? Uh, my turn, because you just did that. Okay. Uh, three sixes. God, the sixes... Uh, you don't do that. <laughs> Let's say you can't do that. Oh, yeah, that's the rules. You can't stand. Whenever a woman starts the bidding, <laughs> you can't use sixes. All right. You gotta have two. I do. God. All right, so that was the first time that was actually a win, right? It was truthful. So do I get something? 
Woo, woo. No? Good job, Judy. Good job, Judy. Yeah. So we just keep going? Pat on the back. I, uh, just keep going? Yeah, yeah. Keep going till, and then what happens? Till there's no dice? Or till, till somebody one. loses, yeah. She loses all their dice. All their dice. And this one, you go into I mean, a bar. Left? Two. Two. And you have three. So five. But when you go into a bar, yeah. you, you ask the bartender to play them for drinks. Ah. Uh. And he brings out the dice, and when you they lose... They have these, or it's a staple at a bar? Some yeah, bars. Some bars, mm-hmm. yeah. Some of the better bars. Okay, let's say better, yeah. <laughs> All Who's right. going? You. Okay, then I'm going to say... Uh, but I won that one. Does it, do I get to go again? Because I won? I th- maybe. I forget I that feel. part. Um, two sixes. A pair of sixes. Wait, what did I say about sixes? You can't do that. I can say sixes. All right. Uh, Ah, damn it. Ah, see. Damn it. Good, good, good. All right. Now it's even. We both have two. Uh, I'm going to say two twos. Two twos. Two twos. Two twos. Nah, you're lying. You don't have two of them. You don't have to. Uh, no, nope. right. lying. No. Let me see it. Make the... Nah, you so lied. All right, I'm going to win. I'm going to win this game right here, right now. Boom. See, now we'll see co- how cockiness works. <laughs> uh, snake eyes, pair. Of ones? Uh-huh. They're called snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three snake eyes. Mm, you're lying. I won. Yeah, and that's how you do it. This game <laughs> Sorry, sucks. It's, that's, see, that's why I started this podcast so I could get my, so I could win my games. I love games. Let's talk about Clearly. Tuesdays with Ted. Okay. Where can they find it? Uh, uh, what tell us about it? Um, it's on uh, Barnes and Noble and uh, Amazon. At a bookstore. Uh, it's at, I think it's, it's I think it's at some bookstores, but not. Universally, that's really great. Obviously, Amazon yeah. and Kindle. Yeah. They can download yeah. their Kindle. Yeah, and this is great. Some other stuff. Are there pictures? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's a picture of my dad and Ted. I no, know. wait, that's Ted and my dad. And uh, the yeah. love that is coming from Ted's eyes in this shot. The, it, if everybody that was can a, see it. It's just beautiful. They did a publicity shoot, and and uh, yeah, they just they took about twenty shots, and they're just fooling around. There's one shot where Ted got behind my dad and grabbed his breasts, Aww. which is so sweet. So and, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm glad my mother didn't survive my dad because <laughs> she would not have had fun with uh, that she would not no. yeah and we were, we were entering that era um uh no there's pictures of and my my sons the you know the situation with my dad was uh he never because of my mother one of the reasons it was so special to me was because uh because of my mother's uh insecurities and emotional problems i never saw much of my dad after high school mm-hmm. um so I had to kind of stay away, and, you know, I skipped holidays, and, you know, they didn't find out about my wedding and stuff like that. Uh, they No, they found out about it, but it was not Now they know you're so. married, though. They know now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, up in wherever they are. <laughs> so, no, and so when I finally, you know, when my mother died, all of a sudden I had my dad to myself, and, yeah. but... You know, and then I'm like, oh, you know, I, God, I don't know. Well, if you I can honored him this. in a beautiful way with this book. It was. I feel I was really. You know, by the time he died, I felt like I did everything I was supposed to do. Yeah, it's a good feeling. And his two little his uh, grandsons uh, at the time were two and four, or three oh, and five. Yeah. And he um, he always built things, so he decided to build this huge tree fort oh. out in the backyard. Uh, not a tree fort, but a yeah, fort yeah, on stilts yeah. oh. with a house on top. And then he transformed it into a uh, spaceship with a steering wheel and oh. laser guns. And then at another point, he comes to me and he says, uh, we're standing in his living room, and he says, um, 
he wants all the furniture gone, cleared out of the living room. And he built two huge plywood tables. And then we went down to the slot car track place, and he bought hundreds of dollars of slot car tracks. Oh, he tracks. made his own... <laughs> So his living room became a slot car track. That's awesome. And, you know, and he built mountains and stuff like that. Um, and I remember standing there looking at it, and, and I'm going, God, Dad, you never did anything like this for me when I was their age. And he takes out his machine, and he types out, tough. <laughs> um, you got your sense of humor. I see where you get it from. He, yeah, he was. Well, okay, another time we we used to go to movies down at the Galleria, and I was showing. You know, we left the movie, and I was kind of sh- showing off what a LA guy I was, and and uh, so we get on. Uh, there's two ways to get home to Studio City from this gallery, and one is Ventura Boulevard, and the other is the freeway. So we get on Ventura Boulevard, and it's moving really slow. And I said, I said, well, this is this is crappy. Watch this, Dad. <laughs> and I make an illegal U-turn, and I turn on to Sepulveda, and then we get up on the freeway because I'm going to take the freeway, and we'll be home in a zip. And we get up on the freeway, and it's stock still. It's standing still. And my dad takes out his machine, and he types out smooth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So Tuesdays with Ted by Russ Woody. Go to Amazon, go to Barnes & Noble and pick it up. And thank you so much for being my guest today. It was just enlightening and heartwarming. Really. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. It was a pleasure. You're a good uh, interview person. Good listener. What do you call it? You are. Yes. That's a rare commodity these days. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Okay. And I think we got his uh, Hollywood game changing. I think your game game changing moments for yeah. sure. Yeah. And your favorite game is my new favorite game. So stay tuned. Next week we will have a new guest.